in the club have christened me the Godfather. All my life I always went to Mass and this Sunday I was at Mass and there was a priest say, said to Mass, Father Laverty was his name, and after the Mass he stood up on the altar and he says, says I'm keen on starting a boxing club in Ballyferm, he said. If anyone is interested, he said, I want them to assemble in Mary Queen of Angels School next Tuesday. So I was with my wife and I said, oh, that's great, I'm delighted with that. The following Tuesday, I went down to Mary Queen of Angels School and there was quite a few down there, there was about seven or eight people down there and we decided to form the boxing club. Now, it was just a cloak room. It wasn't much bigger than this ring, to be straight with you. As a matter of fact, there was urinals, toilets, it was a toilet area and that's where the boys trained. Every night we used to put, put sheets of uh, chip power down, eight by four, and pick them up every night after training. And that, that was the situation anyway. It was very, very small. We were there for nearly 17 or 18 years. I'm Stephen Marr. I lived in the tenements in the inner city. And when you were in there, you were always in fights. Party. Party. My Maisie. Well, I'll be 82 in March next, next month. But my grandmother used to look after a, a boxer, Mickey Whalen was his name, and all his cups was in my grandmother's house. And there was a set of boxing gloves there, and I liked it. I joined a club brewery. Uh, St Vincent's de Paul used to run them. And I got involved in boxing in that like. I went from there then to Tushkart and the Rock, North City Boxing Club. I think I was about 14, 15, 14 at the time. And I was in that for nearly 11 years. I had about 55, 50, 55 fights. I lost about 12. But I boxed all the good ones. I remember I started boxing, I was annoying. Robbie came along, but Robbie was very feeble. Very, very feeble he was. His breathing was very, very bad. I was kind of eager to get down and start boxing, so Kosha persists, can I go to the boxing club? Can I go to the... So I went down and met Steve Marr. Kosha was dying, I was sick with asthma, I could hardly walk, so it was, it was a struggle to be allowed to get into the club because we had talks with doctors and he could do a little bit of training on, under monitored supervision and stuff like that. So I met Steve and Steve's mother had been sick with asthma. Kind of automatically just, ah, oh, come in here, don't worry about it, just do a little bit. And he just, that gave me the impetus, I suppose, and I just had a love straight away from the first day I got into the club. Specifically, well, I suppose what Steve would have done, I suppose he, he kind of tailored our diets, he tailored all our diets, as all the kids that were in the boxing club. And I can say this now, in my time, I'm sort of semi retired now in the club, at 80 odd years of age, but in my time, it's about 80, nearly 1,800 kids went through the club. 
So I remember my mum, she'd make the Friday chips on Friday and she'd have to make two dinners because Robbie specifically wanted boiled potatoes and I kind of had a half a, half a diet instinctively given to me by Steve Barr without even realising I had this diet. Most of the kids learned good manners, civic pride and respect. Um, and he walked with me, he gave me little exercises for breathing and he kind of coaxed me along and I suppose he didn't push me too far initially but then as I wanted to push myself more he got behind me more and pushed me more and more and he was always aware that I had got bad asthma so he was always conscious of that. I remember him sometimes at the ring he'd be, have you got your inhalers with you Robbie? And I knew once or twice he was nervous when I was boxing. But he kept that as, and between that and a bit of swimming, he developed his lungs. Because I remember coming back in a close round him, and I think Stephen wanted to throw in the towel and I says, no, no, leave it. Because he said, Robbie, maybe we leave it today. I said, no, I'm going now. I went out and won that fight. So sometimes I remember him telling me that story as well. He had a great amateur career and Robbie finished up as light welterweight champion of Ireland as a professional. We were trying to get a, a bit of land to build a club. We had quite a few politicians in. Brian Courtney, the chairman, brought up Linda Kavanagh, which was a councillor in the area. He brought her up here and uh, he brought her into the, the gym and he showed her the gym and she couldn't believe it. There was about 20 or 25 kids training in a little area and the urinals were there. She couldn't believe that we were training in, in, in this this situation like that. She said she'd do her best for us anyway. She introduced me to all the officials, Dublin Corporation, the Board of Planning, all these people which I had to meet. I didn't have much of a clue of the way things were done, but Linda was my guide. I was told by these, most of these officials, was a young man, do you think that you can build this club? Do you, do you think it's possible that you can build this club? I so he kept saying, yes, why not? She went to the Late Late Show one Friday night and uh, Pat Kenny, was it? Yeah, Pat Kenny was, uh, what would you call it, in charge of the situation. But then the politician, McDade, McDade, Jim McDade was, was the Minister for Sport at the time and he was on the Late Late Show that night and he had a model of the, the state, the football stadium in Abbottstown. And he says, this is what we want. The government wants this, this stadium for their internet, because the, the soccer crowd were doing great at that time. You know, and uh, he said, we want to build this stadium. So with that, Linda stood up. He said, excuse me, Mr. McDade, she said. I'm from Ballyferm, I'm a counselor in Ballyferm, she said. And she says, those boys, there's 25 to 30 lads, she says, and they're training in a toilet, she says. Do you not think you'd be better off building boxing clubs, football clubs, in the air, in all these areas? She said, do you not think you'd be better off doing that? She says, we, we, have, we have plans and all done, and the cost of it is 380,000. He says, you, you, need, you need 10% of that, which is 38,000. You must have in the bank. To, to get a grant. She said, how in the name of God, she says, are we going to get 38,000 euros when we're getting 20 euros a week off the kids? So she said, we can reduce that to 5%. She says, okay, 19,000. How are we going to get 19,000? So two weeks after that, I got a letter to the house. I was the treasurer, as well as a coach. I said, dear Stephen, I'm very happy to inform you that the Young People's Facilities has awarded St. Matthew's Boxing Club £315,000. Plus, we had been promised 65000 from the Drug Task Force. Now, you might say that you had 65000 What are you talking about? You couldn't raise it. We didn't have it. We were promised it. But when we got the 315000 we also got the 65000 But we were coming across financial constraints to keep the club going. 
So I suppose when I capitalised on an area of specialist expertise that I had, I was also involved in the club full time basis anyway. And so without without having the support of the club in the position of this and that, I'm a very strong coach. My name is John Murphy and I'm 44. 14, 14, 15, 16. Uh, we have a hard before I come. Uh, it keeps me fitter than I was. Um, just generally just improve their lifestyle. They feel healthier. You just enjoy the classes twice a week. My name is Tommy Cosgrave and I'm 28 years of age. I, I fought on the, uh, the Irish international kickboxing team many years ago. Good. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. My name is uh, Mark Manson. I'm uh, 46 years of age. Uh, I was a player, so I had a small build of me, like, you know, so. I've been involved in a lot of sports and martial arts in all two years. I, don't, you never, I never got as nervous when I was playing football, obviously because you had 10 other people backing you up. When you're in the ring though, you're on your own. And if you don't put the work in and you don't, you know, do your, give it a better effort than you would on the pitch, then you're going to be in trouble. I'm Anthony McMahon, uh, 37, postman. I was always interested in boxing from a young age, but uh, I played football oh, yeah, for, the, for Chile Orchard and Stella Maris, and I was away in England uh, a good few times. And I was away in Stoke, uh, that was predominantly the main team I was away with. I was in Tranmere, uh, I was over there maybe once or twice, and uh, Wolves. I'm Ken O'Neill, I'm 29, I'm from Ballyferma, I'm coaching secretary of the club. And uh, my occupation is I work for Ryanair. Well, the boxing club, I've, I've, I've a great team behind me, and effectively without the team, the club would be in trouble. I never got into boxing until, uh, you know, a later age. You know, I came down here when I was around 20, 23, 24. Straight away, sort of, you know, fell in love with the club, loved everything. It was a real sort of family atmosphere. And... I've Ken, I've Eric, I've Steve and Piercy. And of Darren, and I mean, these are great guys. And but, like, because just sometimes you get 60, 70 kids throughout the week coming in out of the club. So, I mean, physically, it's impossible to do it on your own, but it's not, there's a lot more even than just training kids, just the organization of what goes behind the kids when they have to fight competitions. Like, there's, a, there's a, an array of things that go involved in the club, and that's the boxers that's taking the, the management of the club out of the agenda. So yeah, I'd be lost without them, and they're, they're great help, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I didn't do it all on my own. Billy Chittle, I think he was the secretary. Brian Corden was the chairman. Mick Hoyland, Paddy Malone, Frank Hines, myself, Tommy Barrington, Paddy Kilty. Yeah, it, it requires a lot of time and effort, you know, and you know a lot of uh, a lot of patience to put in with kids, you know, um, because that's what they need. They need they need someone, you know, to tell them that they're that they're doing great and you know all this sort of thing, you know. Well, the club used to be in the school I went to as a young kid, and just kind of once I seen the ring, I wanted to go down, basically. How can you not like working with the kids? I mean, the kids are great. The kids give you, I suppose, the impetus to do it. Cause when you see them doing things, I mean, that's, that's reward in itself. Because I just love boxing and I love doing it. Better than any other sport? Better. Boxing is my top lead and I love it. Why do you like boxing so much? Uh, it, 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 well, one thing, it, it lets you fit and uh, you can protect yourself. Yeah, well, it's a brilliant sport. It keeps you fit, keeps you active. Owen is the oldest. He's seven. 
you know, so they're still, and I've Connor, he's three and a half, you know, so they're still pretty young, you know, so, uh, you know, there's still plenty of time to, to find the love of the, of the sport, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm Sean, I'm, I'm nine. Uh, I'm Lee and I'm 11. I'm Paul and I'm 14. I'd, I'd really, to be honest, at this stage, I'd prefer them to be boxers than, than footballers, you know. When it comes to the training, we do our best, you know, we push yeah. ourselves. We put our head down and get stuck yeah. into it. Yeah. You gain a lot from seeing, say, if his kid is nine and he's, he's, he's developing as a child or he's, he's, he's learning to box a bit or he's feeling more confident in himself. And to say that you, you gave a little hand or part to help him achieve that, I mean, that's a big thing. Excellent, boy. I'm not sure if you were able for it. Yeah, I'm delighted with the people of Ballyfermot, the kids of Ballyfermot, like. Oh, he's the Polish champion of Ireland. Are you ready? Are you ready? Good man, excellent. I suppose it doesn't really matter to me. If, like, it's great that if we can get champions out of them, but it's not really all about getting champions out of me, like if, if they develop in some way from the club, because like, I always feel that developing in yourself rather than being a champion is half the battle of a boxing club. There's a different, it's, you enjoy, I enjoyed football, it was great for winning, you're part of a huge team, but there's an excitement or something with boxing, a nervous excitement, and you know, more of an edge to it. I can't explain it really, I don't know what it is, but. You know, once you get that that feeling, it's in the pit of your stomach. It's it is really really good. I said, look, I'm 37. I'm still coming down training, so well, it's hard to explain. I like the buzz of being in the noise of the bags being hit and the you know, just smell of the gym when you walk in. You know. We got a nice uh, speech off of Stephen. He was telling us that uh, you have to have the heart. Anything you want to accomplish, you have to train. You have to put it in. Scored well with that right hand. Oh, that's a beauty. One, two, and he's put him on the season. Robbie Murray, 77 points, the winner. Robbie Murray. Oh, Robbie. Murray wins it. That oh, Robbie Murray. Oh, Robbie Murray. The year just gone there, like, with the train now, Robbie and all the thing, all the high performance train now. I actually had a fairly good year this year. I was beating only by one or two points by like, the best lads in the country. That's a way watching all the World Championships again from fairly close points. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know it was a big improvement. I'm putting everything into it this year, everything. And getting a lot of shows for you and internationals. I only got back from internationals in London, Denmark. So, this year should be a great year for me. My name is Martin McGeehan, I'm 35 and I'm a plaster. Slash. Slash. <laughs> okay. Hook to the body. 
Well, we have to go double jab, right hand, right? You had to go easy on him, you know yourself. <laughs> He's an OAP now, you have yeah. to take it easy. All right, when you're ready. Oh, good shot. Oh, you can do better than that, right? He tries to hold it back. Who's there? Now bear in mind, <laughs> Paul hits like a man, and he's a tough boxer. <laughs> and then he goes in the office and yeah. has a little cry. <laughs> Now, no one ever knows, oh, I always tell them, many of them drop me to get 50 euro. None of them drop me yet. Paul's got to try and drop me. Whatever you want. Oh, not bad, he can do better than that. Oh, excellent, that's the rib breaker. That's, that's the it. rib breaker. That's well done. <laughs> How long have we been have a cry now? <laughs> I'm Lee I'm sorry. Enough is enough. I have to lose weight, and a friend of mine, 
and the just mean to the St. Martin's Boxing Club, so that's just our staff, so. I've lost over a stone and a half, so I'm going my help. Of all my lads, the night we've spent, when we've woken a small amount, we've had a strength problem, conditioning problem, a speed problem. So the, the, the program for each individual time set, and just walking them in, and again, encompassing them all together, and they come out with, hopefully, the perfect picture. Well, I lost, I got a lot of people to tips now since it's before Christmas. I mean, I did a Monday and a Tuesday and Friday classes with Robbie, and I also do the personal, I joined up on the personal one to one to them, like, you know. I got no boxing skill coming out of this, and now he's got me in doing this far, and I feel very confident, you know. And I'm sure a lot of guys will testify the benefits that they would achieve. It's, I suppose it's, it's correcting the patterns. If you're making a, a wrong pattern, it's to get a correct template together and then they can about them changes. Yeah, it. It was a small part of the moment for cutting down and giving them up, like looking big forward to the future to keep me fit. It's, you know, it's like, normally like, I wouldn't have thought about it step by step, but with that then, it's, you know, it's always looking forward, like it helps you, you know. Absolutely love it. I'm with Robbie now for two, two and a half years. Every uh, Tuesday towards it, and uh, it's helped me have a lot both on the business level and the personal level and the psychological level. Uh, I do personal training with Robbie one to one, and I find it's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, I think he's a serious talented guy, um, and I think certainly I've a relationship with him anyway. Um, you know, he, 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 he understands how I think and how I learn. And sometimes, you know, he pushes me when it's right to push me and takes the foot off. But the times, you know, I'm one of these guys who would really push myself all day, all day, all day. But he sometimes understands that I have to ease up a little bit. And so, yeah, I think it's working well. He seems a bit tired or whatever you can, so I'll just do what I mean. And then he brings it along and he knows he can push it back. He knows he gets it over in the end, you know? But, that's what I'm saying, he knows he's very good with people. Depending on the point of view, so it's the main thing, isn't it? Seven, eight, nine, ten, that jogger again. Confidence in the like that he gets it out and spends the point, which is, he has your prep and anything, so. I'm learning new things every time I come down the road. Let's go, come on the road. Go, put down the road. That's it, go. Yeah. That's it. James Slayer. Ah, Rob's a great trainer, like. That's what I'm saying. He has a club going great now. And he's not only that, for the lads that are going into the competitions, he's getting us a lot of club, club shows, a lot of shows, like me, he's heading the internationals. I'm not only that for me when I was at home, he gave me a wonderful program for all this explosive training to get me ready for in the ring because we know that explosive training. So it's very important that we had to say that I did know it was a big problem with it. Eight, nine, ten, back jogging again, nice and easy. I mean, he's a great trainer. He is, he's, he's a very good trainer. I mean, a lot of the time he brings the training, obviously, that he has been doing throughout his own career, his own boxing career into the training that we're doing, whether it be small tips or, you know, stuff like that. The training is, is excellent, and like, I keep going, and, you know, as long as Robbie's around, I'll be around. Please, guys. Well, look, there'll be different people that I'll be working with, and I'll look, some of the guys I'll be working with out there will be high performance athletes on the training. Some of them will be more than one private trainer who would like to do, we do six week boxing of packages. Uh, I mean, they're all very individual, so I wouldn't comment on any of them. Great bit of crack, good bit of laugh. I mean, Robbie's obviously a bit of a character as well. He loves looking at himself in the mirror. He keeps on going, see this muscle here? <laughs> that's the thing, he's some muscle there, he's in different 30 years to get, and I never get it, but that's, that's his only bad shit, like, you know.
People will want to see this. He loves his car, Robbie, doesn't he? he? loves talking. That's one thing about Robbie is he, he loves a good chat and to tell you, uh, I'm going to put it in a nice way, to tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, what way it should be done. You know, really down to what you should be wearing when you're doing it. Why short boots with grey trousers? <laughs> Do you not like the black short? And of course, as we all know, he's very vain. So, uh, you know, he's got photos of himself in here, his last life. Come on, give him a mask, I'll do it, I'll do it. 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 i that's what I would say. Rob, just be this, I found. Keep taking his top off. <laughs> Look at it in the mirror. <laughs> I got a really hope for that one. <laughs> well, Robbie gets inspired in me, and he always keeps the points to some there. Before he even throws a punch, he's trying to get the head for some reason. Yeah, it always does that. That's three points up for me, no, five points up for me, you wouldn't even hit me. And any point you hit me, I don't get a point. Yeah, Robbie gets the point. Yeah, Robbie gets the point. Being nervous for a fight is, is a new type of nervousness of, of anything else in the world. It's a type of nervousness that can and I remember, he's a bit of a voice now. I remember there was a fellow called Customado, he was Mike Tyson's trainer, and he used to say, turn your fear into fire. Because if you let your fear, your fear can not use a fire, but it can burn you out. But, you know, turn it into fire and use it in the rain. That's how you do it, you have to channel it. And it is a different type of nerves, you know, it's, it's like the Coliseum, think of the gladiator, that's what, it, you know, that's what it's like. You do feel great after one for you as well. And even if you kind of if you lose and stuff like that. Like you're in there, there's a you know, you 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 get in there, it's like it's a good feeling, believe me, it's a good feeling. I'm the best feeling I've ever had when I was raising your hand in the air, all the way to champion, you know. It goes through you from the toes to the top of your skull. It's a, a great feeling, so you really, really enjoy it. You should do it something every day that scares you, that's what they say. This looks scary as a lot, but it'll be well worn. Uh, well, my wife's coming, and uh, all the lads that work with me are coming to support me, just to see the good fry we're all fighting going, so uh, it's, it should be good. It should be good. There's a little bit of banter going on in the class anyway, so there's no reason I won't be on the night. Yes, looking forward to the event. No, I'm not looking forward to getting hit. <laughs> I feel like a lot more nervous getting into the ring with the legs of Robbie uh, and the lads. No, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more physical and a lot more uh, a lot more effort into it. Like that, like the legs are dealing with Robbie Hardy and them. It's shattered. You know? Uh, well, not about the point you're doing work, but uh, I said I'd do it next time, I did. I should have taken it up, but it was probably 16, 17, but I only got into it a year and a half ago. It's something that I regret maybe I should have done when I was much younger, because I enjoyed it as well. Uh, no, I'm thinking Robbie. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing an exhibition fight with uh, Robbie. I'm going to be doing an exhibition with Robbie uh, during the fights on the night. <laughs> I'm hopefully gonna give him a, a couple of hoops, maybe a jab to the to the nose, we wait and see what happens.
I've been doing them, I think it's a three minute uh, spiral, you know, it's an exercise spiral. But I hope it is because. <laughs> I do an individual draft for all. Um, I was in San Diego two summers ago and we ran into a few boxers who were fighting at a Freddie Roach's gym and they started talking about it and I said, this sounds absolutely deadly. Um, so when I came back to San Diego, I like, yeah, ran it all. Did a, did a six week class and then had to go back to college and kind of forgot about it and then came back with six months ago and kind of got bitten by the book and really enjoyed it. When we first fight back, it was the hardest thing was your time. It's it's different you get in and it's very hard to get back to you to when to throw the punch. You think you see it when you actually throw it, they're gone and all so it's it's tough but that's what I wanna say, you got me on the fights, got me back into it when the time and still came back, everything was flowing in. I think irrespective of how it goes, uh, I'll fight again. If it goes badly, I'll probably be more determined to get a better result. And if it goes well, I'll be happy to use it as a springboard on to figure out better things. Well, it was only ever a white collar event, and um, it was up in the It was actually only two weeks ago. Um, so I said, considering I had the training to do or I was doing the training, I would keep it up. Um, with the head gear on the gum shield, hopefully they won't get too marked anymore. And, and have, you got some, have you got some support? Yeah, uh, I the folks have come down. I'm from my family, so yeah, the family have come down. And is there, a, is there a woman coming down to it all? No, no, the only woman will be the sisters and the mother. Uh, no of your friends. So uh, any of the girls that are here on the night, uh, you know, they can look out for me. You're available. Yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> Butterflies the whole day, and on edge, couldn't sleep, nothing, couldn't even eat properly. But it's just been so. It was so long before I had it. So since we I last had a fight, so. I uh, not so much afraid of getting in the ring. It was more just getting it over and coming the ring. Yeah. You're at the prepare for it, you're at the beginning of the ring. So when everything is set, all you have to do now is complete what you have done for the previous six or seven weeks. Great. A bit of a, a sense of achievement. You know, it's gonna be hard if you step into the ring, everybody watching me, but when I get in, I'll just turn myself off and just go for it. So it's it's only a good night. What can they expect? Punches. <laughs> Keep their hands on it. A little bit of a punch as well can change someone's mind and what they're going to do, you know? Get stuck in and then they tire themselves out. It would be good though to see how people handle it, you know? Now today was a big sports day, we had a Grand National. We had a Liverpool FA Cup final between Liverpool and Everton. But tonight, we're here for the main event of the day. It takes a lot for someone to get into the ring. So even if you have a favourite fighter, please be respectful of the other fighter and give them a big round of applause as they get into the ring. It's, um, it's a huge thing to get in boxing and some of these, some of these men are Slightly past the point. It's good, it keeps you at home, right? It keeps you, right? I've something to do, let's do it. You know, uh, and that kind of thing. It's uh, something a little bit of fire in you. Get out and do some kind of stuff. I'm fair play to you, you're doing it. Let's go, everyone! I don't know how to do the training, what's up with Pete? So you use the training.
Contest. And I thought I gave a good account of myself considering the chap I thought was about 10 years younger, a hell of a lot fitter. But he managed, so I managed to talk me boxing scales, considering I haven't boxed for years, wasn't bad. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, the winner of that contest in the red corner, no time. The train for a for while of the build up of both of them and on the red corner, so we told them on the way that the crowd, the Lord, you know, they're going to be so distracted, they're going to be nervous, and that's part of parsing. This is simply for the foot, ladies and gentlemen. I can see one of them not in the other one. I'm looking forward to getting out of it in one piece. <laughs> Second time. Big round of applause for Lee Smith, please. for the younger kids coming through because it's hard for the younger kids to keep, keep communities and little clubs like this going and this facilitates that so it's, your support is much appreciated. Come over this group of lads who were in training with me for the last couple of months and I mean some of them never boxed before and I have to say absolutely tremendous performance. You all deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> We 
have young boys in the club and men in the club, but we want to get a female showroom built and we want to expand the club slightly because there's so much, so many people looking to join young girls now. Due to that, I suppose, the success of Katie Taylor, there's a lot to learn through boxing. I think there's a great future in this club for, for girls and boys, men and women, for, for all ages. I'm delighted with it. It's lovely to go and please God when I do go, but this club will be, my name will always be connected with it. And I, I'm very pleased with that. I think it's great, I do. And I got a presentation of a vase, and it's actually on it. And when any of this friends or anything comes up, they have a good laugh, the godfather. 